What's up, people of the world? It's me again, Alex Swimmer, <clears throat> aka AP3 Jumped. And after an exhausting couple of days of working nonstop, uh, I'd like to welcome you back to the Vlogs 95, where I do a little Loud House Season 3 discussion. I talk about things that have happened within the Loud House, things that are going to happen, and, well, just a, bunch, a lot of interesting stuff to talk about, actually. This is like my third or fourth time recording this. I usually don't say, I usually don't point stuff like that out, but mo most recently I felt like it was okay to do that. I mean, well, it's not that big of a deal, but you know. Really quick, I just wanted to say this right now. I, as of the recording of this video, I finally beat the jump rope challenge in Mario Odyssey, the 100 jump challenge. It was, it was very difficult. It took me multiple times to do it, but I finally managed to do it. I'll talk about this a lot more in detail in my Mario Odyssey video review next month, but what I can say is that uh, the only advice I can really give is that just, first off, yeah, that, 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 that mission requires an intense amount of focus and uh, you just gotta really pay attention and just really focus on what you're doing and just become one with the jump rope. But I'll I'll talk about that more in the future. Yeah. Also another disclaimer, my allergies have fi finally started to subside, but, I, but, but I'm still getting over them, <clears throat> which is why I still sound nasally. So I apologize in advance for sounding like Ray Romano throughout the entire video. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I love Ray Romano. I'm not dissing him, but you know. Let's get on with the video. Now, if you haven't watched my video reviews on the season three premiere, well, you probably should. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. But if you haven't, I'm just gonna give a quick recap. First, recap. <laughs> recap. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, recap! <laughs> so, first off, I'm gonna give you a random fun fact early. The season 3 premiere was the very first pr season premiere that I was able to watch live. The season 1 slash series premiere, I, I didn't watch because I didn't get into the series or become a fan of the series until like August of 2016. And the season 2 premiere I had to watch on demand because I think I was working the day it, it premiered. Uh, which uh, is just funny, I, was I just want to say this real right quick. Eleven Lads of Leapin, the Christmas special, even though it was the season two premiere, it felt more like the season one finale, and <laughs> the new episode, the first episode of 2017, Sweet and Sour, felt more like the season two premiere. I can't be the only one who thought that, but <laughs> oh freaking well. <laughs> I hate Phoenix, but I'm glad I got my orange shirt on. I uh, <clears throat> would wear the orange polo, but... I'm not a fan of collared shirts either. I never was, to be honest. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so what did I think of the season three premiere? I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> clearing my throat. I <clears throat> clearing my throat a lot. I apologize. <clears throat> but I thought season three kicked off to a great start. I couldn't have asked for a better season premiere. Although, yeah, like I said, the Christmas special was a very was a very good season premiere for season two as well, but <laughs> season three was good. Both the hat both halves were great. I loved both segments for for their different reasons. And I thought they were great. Uh Rody to Nowhere was <clears throat> the very first episode where Lincoln has no lines of dialogue, dialogue whatsoever. He cameos a lot throughout the entire episode. But it has no lines of dialogue at all, which is the first for the series. And I imagine that's going to happen, and I think I know for a fact that's going to happen a lot more often. Like, <clears throat> Lincoln's still going to make cameos in the towel cards, though. Like, in Rohit's Noir, he has, like, there's, like, a this orange sticky note with his, with his, uh, head drawn in, like, a white pen or marker or something like that. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, an upcoming episode, No Place Like Homeschool, also has a little sticky note. Representing Lincoln for the title card. So yes, uh, season three. Uh, I definitely, I've been definitely looking forward to season three a lot because, and it's going to deal with a lot more serious topics and more down to earth and more heartfelt topics. 
because yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> by more serious time. I don't mean like nothing too crazy, but something more along the lines like Full House or some old classic sitcoms like Full House or The Goldbergs or pretty much any other or sitcom. The Middle, Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> Yeah, no, both shows have almost the same damn name, but <laughs> I thought The Middle was a remake of the Ma of Malcolm in the Middle when I first heard about it, but... <laughs> so yeah, I read uh, specifically on the wiki that it's going to cover all types of topics, all but all but except death, so... I'm very much looking to forward to a lot more serious topics, and a lot more... Like, the lessons and <clears throat> metaphors and stuff are going to be a lot more, um, what's the word? I forgot. It's, <clears throat> these lessons, like, uh, Rory's Nowhere's lesson, it's a lot more, um, uh, thought out. Like, the lessons taught are, definitely give you a lot, a lot more of, of something to think about, or... And uh, have a hell of a lot more meaning, even more so than what the lessons did in the previous seasons had. Had so, I know I, f I know I screwed up my grammar right there, but uh, <laughs> so but, but but basically, season three will. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, seeing it's a lot more of its serious topics and more heartfelt lessons and whatnot, which leads me to. I guess I'll segue into what, like, predictions I have for the series. Some of them are going to be, like, quite obvious, and everyone is going to have these predictions. <laughs> but others are kind of, kind of sort of my own thing. I mean, I'll get with the obvious ones for out of the way first. And now, we all want to see Lucy's eyes, right? We, they've only been slight, they, they've only been, like, teased and referenced in, uh, <laughs> The Crying Dame. <laughs> the re we found out the reason why Lisa grows out her bangs. And it's because of the fact that as a baby, she just gets, she just kept staring at her parents, and and uh, and uh, Lucy uh, comically makes a remark right afterwards. She says, "I can still see you." <laughs> well, yeah, and I think in the same episode, a pair of floating eyeballs float above her head, and even in and even one of the stories in the graphic novels has like meatballs or something like f f plastered on her face where her eyes would be. So yeah. I really hope I'm really hoping we'll get to see Lucy's eyes this this season. I imagine she'd have like she'd have I'm not sure how many eyelashes she would have because f female characters either have only two or three, never just one on each eyeball. But I'd imagine Lucy would maybe have maybe she would have three pairs. I don't know. And it's weird because certain Loud Sisters should have three pairs when they only have, like, two. Like, uh, uh, Lana, it's really strange for Lana to have, uh, like, the, uh, the girlier, the girlier ones should be the ones to have three eyelashes, whereas the more tomboyish ones should only have two. Which is weird because Lana has three just like her twin sister, and I find that just to be kind of strange, but... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of digressing a little, but another thing I want to see is an episode fo focusing strictly on the two Lins, Lin Loud Jr. and Lin Loud Sr. And I also want to find out why she, Lin Jr. was named after her father. And uh, I feel like that'll be a very interesting episode. I have no idea what it'd be about, per se. But I'm interested, I'm interested to see more of their relationship. Like we, so we'd actually get to see the relationship. Due to how many characters there are on the show, there are certain pairings that we rarely ever see. <laughs> so it'd be nice to see more of more <clears throat> uncommon pairings be more developed and have their own episodes. They take a hell of a lot of figuring out to do. Like they, I'm sure they would have some sort of like grid or something in order for them to like keep track of something like that. <laughs> but. It, it wouldn't be too hard if once you ha they actually have it all written down on paper, if you know what I'm saying. Now I've come up with a lot of plausible uh, episode ideas in my own head. Because, <laughs> like, like I said in the past, the only, ep the only characters who have not been antagonized against are Rita, uh, Helena, and Lily. I, I, even though Lily's the only baby, I still, I still feel like... I still kind of have an idea of how... And everyone would antagonize her. 
Like, maybe Lily Lily would be the blame for something, and then the... Like, the rest and everyone would blame Lily for something bad that happened, and then... Then, yeah, that's pretty much all I got, but... <laughs> I'm interested to see where all that goes, because... Yeah, every other loud family member has been antagonized against Lincoln more so than everyone else, because he's the main character. <laughs> but, yeah, um... That's pretty much it with that. One random prediction I just want to throw out there is that I want to see Lisa show her true rage. This idea is kind of kind of uh, kind of randomly specific, but it's still something interesting that I'd like to see. Because even though she's a child genius, winning a Nobel Prize Jr. before Sheldon Cooper still even has the opportunity to do that. He hasn't even won a Nobel Prize yet, and he's in his thirties. <laughs> But anyway, even though Lisa's a child genius, she, at the end of the day, she's still a toddler. She's still only four years old. And even though she's, like, completely devoid of emotion for most episodes, uh, I still want to see, like I said, I still want to see uh, Lisa show her true age. Like, maybe something can trigger her to behave like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have too many details on how that could happen, but maybe someone is like uh, screwing with her uh, ex experiments, or maybe some, because nothing can phase Lisa unless, like, <laughs> no, no, no an, a, any insult that Lisa would receive would just be like, Shroom! just, she, she wouldn't, she wouldn't budge, she wouldn't give a crap. And she wouldn't give a crap, but if someone to, were to insult her on her sciences, and maybe try to, like, like, Mess like literally mess with her experiments. Call like like <laughs> I can't even talk for some reason. But basically, just throwing all her like life's work and like in the trash and all for nothing. Never gonna get that time back. I feel like that's what could trigger her. That's what could cause her to show her true age. Maybe have a maybe have an out. Maybe have a maybe start bawling or something. I don't know. I'm interested to see what you, what episode ideas you guys have in the in the comment section below. Like I, I've only read a few of the, this season's titles, like um, uh, Road Trip or something like that. I forget what the hell it's called, but I didn't bother to read any descriptions because I wanted to be still wanted to be like surprised, you know, <laughs> as surprised as possible, but. The musical episode is also happening this season. I don't know when, but it's going. To, it, that should be very entertaining. Also, there's this one thing that all of us have been anticipating. We we just didn't know when it would happen, but it finally happened. And that is that Clyde actually has a new voice actor now. After all this time, uh, Cole Harris has been on the show. He's he's because he's outlasted uh, the. Grant Palmer by, uh, by like a whole season. But Colin, uh, uh, Khalil Harris uh, finally hit puberty. His voice finally started to change like completely, and uh, to where he can't voice Clyde anymore. So the, there's there there's finally a new voice actor for Clyde. His name is <coughs> Andre Robinson. Even he has a little bit of a resume too. He's he's been on uh, I think American Dad and Despicable Me too. So. It's like I said a long time ago, everyone on the show has been on something. <laughs> Even the child actors. Even Chloe Harris was already on previously on Blazing the Monster Machines before the Loud House. <laughs> but yeah. And no one freaking North is also on Blazing the Monster <laughs> Machines, but I'll talk about that another time, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Chloe Harris. Uh, congratulations for doing an excellent job on Clyde, and uh, good luck to you, uh, Andre Robertson. For good luck to you. Uh, we, uh, I have, I have great faith in him. I don't know how, I don't know how different he'll sound though. Like I'm gonna have to listen to his work on on uh, American Dad or whatever just to hear his voice, so I can get an idea of how the new Clyde will sound. Maybe he'll sound similar, <laughs> like Benjamin Forrest Jr. He mentioned he managed to sound. Exactly like the original Gerald, or Gerald's, and I think he had multiple voice actors too. I don't know. Maybe maybe the new Clyde will sound the same. Maybe he won't. I don't know. So uh, yeah, 
Uh, I've got to wonder if Lincoln will <laughs> if Lincoln will have another new voice actor because he's had three already. Uh, oh, <laughs> it took me it I took me a whole freaking season to get to to get used to. It took me all of season two to get used to Colin Dean's voice. Well, it took <laughs> it took me all that long to get used to his to synonymizing his voice as Lincoln's character for me personally. Because at first he just didn't sound like Lincoln to me, but after a whole season, he his voice finally finally started to resonate with me as Lincoln Loud. That's a lot of freaking information, but yeah. Something else really cool that happened on the day of the season premiere. In honor of the season premiere, Nicole and released a video on YouTube, and it was nothing like I've ever seen. Well, it was a new attempt at something that already exists. And that is a 360 degree video of the Loud House entitled Center of Chaos. And so it's like the very first 2D animated 360 video and once I first found out about it, I'm like, oh wow, holy crap, how are the, how, how did they do that? How are they able to like con convert a 2D space into like a 360 video? And once I watched it, and I was turning my phone around gyroscopic style, and I was I was kind of blown away. It, it was cool as shit. The, the video was the video was just real <laughs> it was cool as shit. And uh, it, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Uh, to to see to be in a two D space like that, be able to be able to move freely around in a two D space, <laughs> I've never really seen that before, and that was just really awesome. And uh, it's definitely very high tech <laughs> because I've seen an article. I've seen an article on how on the behind the scenes for that, and apparently, well. The animate the animating the characters was was wasn't particularly difficult for the animators, and but what kind of blew my mind was that the fact that they were able to um, stick all the animations in the, in the in the three D space and to be able to do that, I don't know how they did, but it was just freaking incredible, and I loved every single second of it. Not <laughs> for for the technical aspect of it alone and what it managed to accomplish, that was freaking cool. All these lot of promotional thing things are just really neat because last fall they did a live Facebook session, th so it was the one of the first live two D animated things I've ever seen because I've seen live three D animation is easy. It's very easy to do. You can just do motion capture. Uh, I've, see, I've seen it at this. I've they do it at Disney World and Nintendo. Charles Martinet <laughs> did. Charles Martinet's first role as Mario was a, a real-time 3D made the creepy face from uh, Mario Paint. Even before Mario's Fundamentals, and that was even before Mario 64, but yeah. I've even gotten the privilege to see live 3D animation in person at Disney World. So, if I ever go to Disney World again, I will film there. <laughs> so yeah, being able to do live 2D animation, I don't, I, at first I wasn't sure how to do that, but, uh, but then... I, I predicted, and then it was pretty much confirmed by the fact that they just press buttons depending on what happens. Because the live Facebook session was hosted by Lincoln and Lucy. So yeah, they just press buttons depending on what happens. And the live 2D lip syncing, I'm not sure how they did. Because if they had preset lip sync animations, then it might not seem as authentic. That's probably what they had to have done, because I'm not sure how they would be able to do live 2D and animation lip syncing to I, I don't know how they would have been able to do that so that was still really cool as well and seeing these uh, that and um the the 360 animated video though those were really awesome and really high technical ways to promote the loud house and i'm very excited to see what what other things that Nickelodeon will have what other technological, what other high-tech promotional material for the Loud House will happen in the future. I'm very excited for that. And uh, not just high-tech stuff, but unique stuff too. Like uh, the, 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 the Listen Out Loud podcast. That was very fun to listen to. So, yeah, I think I am done. Also, there's going to be at least three more graphic novels. Uh, 
So yeah, those are going to be very exciting again, which leads me to randomness. Now, if you see my Christmas mirror, then you know I have these already, but if you haven't, then boom. These are the first two Lighthouse graphic novels that were released. There will be chaos and there will be more chaos. It's a little bit hard to see if, if the full title if you're not looking closely, but yeah. Uh, I first found out from uh, Gravity Ferb that there was going to be even more graphic novels than I had originally anticipated. Because yeah, instead of like two more this year, it's going to be like at least three more coming out this year. The third one is coming out in March. That one's called Live Life Loud. And one of them's called Man with a Plan. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting those as well. Because yeah, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed these too. These This is also like a really unique way to experience the Loud House in like what would have been its true um, medium, <laughs> so so to speak, because the show does have a comic book art style, and yeah, <laughs> need I say any more? Y'all pretty much get the idea. So those are the random objects of the day. And really, really quickly, really quickly, I want to show some uh, drawings that I did of each and every one of the characters, each of the Loud family members. I, I, I don't think I'm going to draw any of, the, any of the side characters right now. But really quickly, I drew these last year, or, or actually m earlier this year. But yeah, we're going to start off with Lincoln Loud. This one doesn't have any hard drawing, hard lines. All the rest of them do, though. And... Let's go and run by these really quickly. So yeah, there's that. Here's Lori. She she actually covers up most of the page. She's the only character that does that. That I drew that does that. One of the only few characters that I drew that also has an accessory. So yeah, I did not trace these. I swear to God. I swear on my. I swear on um. Uh, well, so yeah. I <laughs> I swear to my great great aunt. That I did not trace these, because it looks like I traced these, but I did not trace these. It, <laughs> I, it just took me a very long time drawing these. Here's Lenny. I feel like I chibied her a little bit too much by mistake. Like, her, her body is smaller than the rest. She's disproportionate. And I kind of did that by accident without even realizing it, but I st think... I think I still did an okay job. I mean, it looks fine, and it doesn't look all that bad like her head's not too much bigger than the rest of her body here's a uh, luna one of my favorites uh she's got hard lines and uh on the paper clip it did a remarkably well job on that skirt was a pain in the freaking ass to draw the plaid design on that that was a bitch and a half to try to draw it was so annoying to map that out trying to do that but I did that exactly I did not free I, I did not uh freehand this at all and drew that exactly ha a as it was originally the X's on her boots the laces on her boots were easy to figure out the geometry of that but the plaid design was just damn near impossible but somehow managed to do it send um Here's Gawain, another one of my favorites. Uh, I chibied her a tad bit too much, but it's not as noticeable as how I did with Lenny. Yeah. So. A th a this plaid design, on the other hand, and all the other plaid designs were very easy compared to Luna's skirt. I mean, oh my god. I, I don't know how they would have animated that. Here's a... <clears throat> Moving on to Jessica the Chico's characters. Who is pregnant, by the way. Uh, I want to say uh, good luck with the pregnancy. And I uh, hope the baby comes out nice and healthy and uh, happy. And uh, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl or not, but best of luck to you, Jessica, on the pregnancy. So, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, th this is uh, JF JFM Studios' favorite, actually. And I'm, uh, see if this or Nothing special to note about how I drew this, but... There's the drawing. I didn't color in any of the pupils either. Lucy. Another one of my favorites. Her design still reminds me of, of like, 
if she was like a lost long family member of the Adams family. <laughs> Her design has always reminded me of that. Yeah, mo most all, all of these characters took me like three, two to three hours each to draw, whereas Lucy only took me one hour because there's not much to her design whatsoever. She barely has anything on her design to do. I didn't bother doing the reflections on her hair, though. I just skipped out on that. I could have done that, but I don't know. Here's on another one of my favorites. Despite being the, despite loving mud, she is still freaking adorable. And uh, so yeah, I uh, nothing much to note here. Uh, but the way I drew her, and uh, there's Lola. And there she is. I had to freehand the TR because while well, I drew all these drawings like 98% accurate to how I was looking at the images. <laughs> the TR I just had to do freehand because there was no way I was going to try to draw that normally. <laughs> like, as is, that would have been even more difficult than the skirt, L Luna skirt. But I was originally going to draw her showing her teeth, but <laughs> with all of the artwork poses, I chose spe specific artwork poses. Since I was drawing these guys for the first time, those I chose specific artwork poses to draw them. So I can get an understanding of exactly how to draw them. If you know what I'm saying. There's 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 other poses I really wanted to draw, but I had to draw the ones I chose here. In order to... So I could draw them easily when I'm while drawing them for the first time. Here's Lisa. Her hair surprisingly wasn't that hard to, to draw. It, it wasn't that annoying to draw. It wasn't complicated at all. It just took a long time. All these drawings took a very long time, but they were all a hell of a lot worth it. I, I, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and uh, here's Lily. Now with Lily, I wanted to draw her with her mouth open so I could draw her buck tooth. And her with, uh, with her diaper, but I couldn't find uh, a pose with both. So I opted for this artwork pose instead. Uh, which is uh, paying homage to uh, Linus. Because Lily has a blankie too, and I decided to draw her with a blankie. I thought that would be interesting to draw an accessory of a character who who's as big as the character. So, so yeah. Otherwise, Lily, Lily wouldn't have took me long to draw at all. But yeah, Lily's adorable too. She she's sucking her thumb, and uh, yeah, nothing else to note about how I drew her. Now on to the parents. These are artwork poses. This isn't like official artwork per se, but rather vectors from Sweet and Sour. <clears throat> For Lynn and Rita. Lynn Sr. It took me a while to... <sighs> My throat's starting to well up on me. It took me a while to get the geometry of his face like exactly right. The plaid on his uh, uh, clothes wasn't hard to draw at all. I also decided for all these characters to not draw the scribble shadows or... I'm, although I did so for the bottom of Lynn's pants, I didn't. I, I didn't decide to do that. I also didn't decide to draw any of the etched uh, shadowings, you know, like their necks or limbs or whatever else. But yeah. And finally, we have Rita. I think Lynn Senior took me the longest for some reason, but uh, but uh, Rita, she 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 didn't take long to draw either. I was debating on whether to color these, but. And in the end, I decided I'm not going to color these drawings. I will draw all these characters again. Maybe then I'll color them, but I don't think I'll color these drawings at all. But yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed at how it actually was able to draw these like exactly right. To the point where it does look like I traced them. But yeah, that's it. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Be sure to stay tuned for... More Lighthouse video reviews and more vlogs and whatnot. And anyway, I'm Alex Wilber, aka With Your Jumped. Thank you so much for watching until the end. That's it for me. And I will see you soon. Goodbye. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought of these drawings and let me know what your predictions for season three are. Shout out to all my Loudhouse friends on Twitter and all my and all my Loudhouse artists. Shouts to the cast and crew as well. 
The actual cast members liked my t one of my tweets. Like, <clears throat> the actual cast members, some of them, they know who I am now, which is pretty freaking mind-blowing and awesome, but yeah. Good night, everybody.